Welcome to HDTV, you're now rocking with your boy. Mike Sando names the sleeper team he believes has a great chance to land Garoppolo. If you watch Jimmy Garoppolo's farewell presser, it's clear that he has played his last game as a member of the Niners. Where he ends up next season is far less certain. Odds makers have identified a number of teams they think Garoppolo is likely to play for next year, with the leaders being the quarterbacks, backless Steelers, Bucks, and Washington. All three teams have talented rosters that should be able to make the playoffs with just above average quarterback play. Veteran NFL reporter Mike Sando believes there is another team that falls into the same category that is actually a more likely landing spot for Garoppolo. I think Indy is a real sleeper team, Sando said on KNBR Tuesday morning. I think the Carson Wentz thing didn't work out for them, and I think they could move him and maybe still get something for him. Garoppolo could make some sense going to a team that's already pretty good, that at its best has a good offensive line, and might be able to support him with a pretty good defense. Remember, he's going to be part of this, too, and the Niners are going to try to take care of him. That's the type of team. That kind of came to my mind just looking around at these teams that are in a position to win if they are going to send them to a team that has a chance that really limits it because most of the teams that have a chance have a quarterback that at least is good as Garoppolo or not so much worse that you are going to trade out your guy. Sando wouldn't discount the Steelers as a possibility either but isn't sure trading for a QB like Garoppolo fits their style. I wouldn't be surprised if they went with one of their guys or go via the draft. Do they just go that route because of what they've always done? So, um, <clears throat> do I think Jimmy Garoppolo would be a good fit in Indianapolis? And I don't know, man. Um, I think Jimmy G would be a good fit in New York, but they drafted a quarterback, so they're probably going to try to go with him. But to me, he would fit in New York. You know, they're saying he might go to the Bucks. I don't know. I don't think. Um, I don't think he'll fit with the Bucks because the Bucks doesn't have a running game, and he needs to go to a place like yeah, Indy because they have a running game. Um, well, Tennessee look like they're not going to get rid of Tannehill no time soon. I would say the Steelers because you got Najee Harris there, but I don't think they want that. I think they're looking for a quarterback they can start from scratch with and go into the um, future with. Um, that's about it, man. Um, you know, um, I wouldn't take him over Derek Carr. Um, that'll be dumb if you go, if you get rid of Derek Carr for him, you would get rid of a Derek Carr for like a Deshaun Watson. So, what do you guys think? Do you guys think um, Jimmy G would fit there? I don't I don't know. I don't think he will. I think Jimmy G would fit New York. Indianapolis is good. Um, but his problem also is he can't stay healthy. You know, he's not great at staying healthy. You know. That's his only problem. And to me, he's not a franchise quarterback. Now, the Jaguars may not need to trade for Amari Cooper to land him. Um, this is going to be a busy offseason for the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're off to a good start after making Doug Peterson their new coach. There's plenty of work left, and once Peterson is finishing building his staff, he and general manager Trent Balk will need to focus on fortifying the roster. Upgrading the wide receiver corps should be one of the team's brass top priorities, and they would fill a need by landing Amari Cooper, a first-round pick by the Las Vegas Raiders. It was the Oakland Raiders then, now it's the Las Vegas Raiders, and this was in 2015. Cooper is currently on the Dallas Cowboys roster, and while 
it looked like they would have needed to trade for him to acquire. The Jaguars might not need to part ways with any compensation after all. Bobby Belt of the 105.3, the fan expects Cooper to be a cap casualty this offseason. If the wide receiver does become a free agent, he would instantly become one of the most coveted players in the open market. The Raiders traded Cooper for a first-round selection in the middle of the 2018 season. He quickly became a key cog in Dallas offense, catching 53 receptions for 725 yards and six trips to the end zone in nine outings. Over his seven-year career, the Alabama product has made four Pro Bowls and has hauled in 517 receptions for 7,076 yards with 46 touchdowns. This isn't going to be particularly strong free agent class of wide receivers. However, there should be a few options that may be of the Jaguars' interest. Odell Beckham Jr. should be at the top of their wish list. And as unlikely as a reunion with Allen Robinson might be, it shouldn't be off the table. If Cooper is available, he should also be a target. After all, he's had success both as a member of the Silver and Black and the Boys. Dallas wouldn't cut him because he is no longer good. Instead, they need to trim their cap. And moving on from the receiver would help them achieve that end. Cooper set to account for $22 million in cap space. Releasing him would create a dead cap hit of $6 million, but also would free up $16 million. The positives of cutting ties with him seem to outweigh the negatives, especially when you take into account that Cowboys executive vice president, Stephen Jones, doesn't think the wide receiver's performance on the football field hasn't been proportional to his salary. Another option for the Jags is to use their second round pick in the 2022 NFL Draft on a wide receiver, but given all the holes they need to fill, they may be better off getting a proven commodity on the open market, and Cooper might be one of the best if he's available. The Jaguars are in the process of putting together a good coaching staff, but they also need to acquire difference makers this offseason if they want to win more games in 2022 than they did last year. Cooper is one of several players that could help them. Um, I wouldn't get Amari Cooper. To me, it's like this. Amari Cooper, as far as his talent and running routes, I mean, he's great at that. He's a great route runner. Um, he can catch the ball. The problem with Amari Cooper is heart and toughness. Like, especially on the road in big games, he's terrible. Now, does some of that have to do with Dak? Yeah, that, that has to do with Dak. But he also did this in um, Oakland or Las Vegas now, whatever, the Raiders. But here's my thing. Dak and Derek Carr are basically the same quarterback. They're very up and down-ish. Um, when they look good, they look good. When they're bad, they are really bad. So Amari could play with Trevor Lawrence. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be a good quarterback. I don't know about great. I think he's a better Eli Manning, in my opinion. Um, I think he'll be just like how Eli is, except I think his decision making will be a lot better. Um, you know, I think he could play. I think the way his quarterbacking skills are, I think he fits a team that's very solid. The Jaguars just need to get offensive line, um, add, add a couple receivers. Um, defensively, I think their front seven is okay. Their secondary needs some help. But they, they really weren't losing games like that. They were losing games, but it was close. They weren't really getting blown out. And then they beat the Buffalo Bills, and they were on the brink of beating the Cincinnati Bengals until they choked in the second half. So this team has potential. They have a lot of potential, and I think Doug Peterson might be able to, you know, get that out of them. He might be able to get them moving, get them going in the right direction. You know, you can um say whatever about Doug Peterson, but you you got to admit, I mean, the guy when it was the game was on the line, he got the job done at times. Um but we'll see, man. The Jaguars to me, I think they'll be a better team this year. I think they will be better than the Texans, of course, which isn't saying much. But I think um, this would be a perfect chance for them to take the division, not this year coming up, but the following year after this year. 
I think, but I think they'll be solid. If they get all their pieces in place and, and they put a good team around Trevor Lawrence, you can see this team make a jump like Joe Burrow and the Bengals did. I don't know about Super Bowl, but hey, it could happen. Now, um, Kyler Murray has a unique leverage over Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinal, the Cardinals front office must know what Kyler Murray wants. Chances are they are the ones refusing to give it to him. With three years under his belt, Murray is eligible for a whopping contract extension. He is also under team control for two more years. His compensation for next season is $11.4 million, a sum that might offend him, especially in a league where the 10 highest paid quarterbacks all earn more than $30 million annually. Murray's move can only be assumed, but by scrubbing all Cardinals content from his social media platform, unfollowing the team in the process, Murray is making some kind of statement. His actions have created a national stir and unneeded distractions in Arizona. It might be the opening salvo, his one chance to express his unhappiness without saying a word. Phase two is where it always gets ugly, as we've seen with Patrick Peterson and others. The difference with Murray is that he is truly different. He has unique leverage because he can always go play Major League Baseball. And because the Cardinals might need him more than he needs them, for proof, look at any other NFL franchise with a voided franchise QB. Yet, if Murray's contract desires have been rebuffed, it means the Cardinals are effectively expressing doubt in his abilities as a franchise quarterback. Consecutive second-half collapses might give the franchise pause, same with Murray's shaky performance in a playoff loss to the Rams. They have plenty of reason to wonder about Murray's ability to stay healthy and sustain an elite level of play beyond Thanksgiving. After losing five of their final six games, many in the organization seem to be pointing at Murray as the player with the most to prove and the one who must improve the most. Meanwhile, retooling the current roster is much easier with an inexpensive quarterback. But Murray might see things differently. He is a two-time Pro Bowl selection and 2019 Offensive Rookie of the Year, and he might be especially bothered if he thinks he's shouldering unfair blame in the presence of a floundering head coach and a paper-thin roster. Since he is choosing not to quell the speculation he's created, it's difficult to predict what Murray will do next. A trade demand like Chandler Jones, a holdout, a return to the Oakland A's, Many scoff at the latter notion, but it would be a massive coup for Major League Baseball if a transcendent black athlete and former Heisman Trophy winner bolted the almighty NFL for America's former pastime. It would give the fading sport an enormous jolt of credibility. Through his self-preservation skills, we also know that Murray doesn't exactly embrace the violence and danger that come with professional football. His lone wolf mentality is equally obvious where he struggles with the leadership component where he doesn't seem to enjoy communicating and connecting with others at times, he behaves more like a baseball player than a prototypical football star. The fears that Murray is just different enough to call a bluff to quit on his current profession and go make a different fortune on a safe playing field, and that should be enough to get the Cardinals' attention. Um, I just really believe that, um, I just believe that, um, Cliff Kingsbury is the problem. I mean, I would get rid of Cliff Kingsbury. If you get rid of Cliff Kingsbury, I think this team will be fine. I I don't know if if Kyler Murray's going back to baseball. I just think people are speculating. I don't think he is. To me, I think Kyler loves football. I just think the problem is has been he's not he's you know he's getting a lot of criticism now some of it is fair but also we have to look at the head coach i just did a, a thing about the head coach calling sean mcveigh before an, or a game asking for two european models to sit front row seat and sean mcveigh was like dude we're about to play a game <laughs> and that just shows you the mindset of one sean mcveigh and the other mindset of cliff kingsbury and that's why one team is in the Super Bowl, why Cliff Kingsbury's at home. Look, Kyler Murray's going to make mistakes. He's 5'6". You know, he's a small guy. You know, he is. But this notion of, oh, well, you know, his leadership and this and that, they always question the brother's leadership, but never question the white guy leadership. <laughs> 
the white guy, the white guy is just the greatest at, at leadership. It's not about the leadership. To me, it's about the play calling, the lack of preparation. When you come into the game and your offense is looking like an elementary school kid could draw that offense up, then that's a problem with your coach. Kyler Murray was very successful in college. Yes, that's college. But at the same time, his rookie year, Kyler Murray was very successful. The problem is that style of offense doesn't sustain in the second half of a season or in the playoffs. That's why a lot of these quarterbacks struggle because a lot of them don't play under center in college. To me, if he had more of a traditional running game, an I formation and fullback and getting the ball to the running back for the running back to get through the hole, I think the Cardinals could be a lot better. That's their problem. They're not a power team. To me, they need to be more of a power team. The Cardinals are very finesse. And to be in the NFC West, you cannot be finesse. you got to be tough. you got to be able to run downhill. But to me, if Kyler Murray does bolt to baseball, you know, this shows that he's a quitter and that he's mentally not tough. And that's going to really hurt his brand. I hope he rethinks what he's going to do. Because by you just saying, I'm going to baseball, that's going to make you look like weak. Now, what if what if in baseball things don't go your way? What if you struggle in baseball? They're going to cream you over there, but it probably won't. He probably won't care because it's not as bad as football. Football, they really cream you because that's the national pastime now. Now it's the sport of the U.S., of, of America. But, hey. It is what it is, man. A lot of these kids want the glory, but they can't handle it when they get the blame. Um, it's tough. And like I said, Kyler Murray, man, you got to understand. If you want to win, you got to make yourself better. If you want to win, to me, you got to be able to stay in the pocket, throw the ball a little more. Um, but it's tough because he's short, so he has to move around the pocket to make some plays. But in my opinion, Cliff Kingsbury is the problem. I think you need a real coach in there, and I think Kyler um, would get better. In my opinion, I think he would be better. I think Cliff Kingsbury did not succeed at Texas Tech, and for him to get a chance to play now is just disrespectful to me. To me, he's not a good in-game adjuster. I think he struggles a lot in-game to adjust to the to the um as the game goes on and that's why they've been losing because his adjustments are terrible he doesn't know how to run the ball um and cliff kingsbury a lot looks very confused like he looks lost like when he's calling plays he's calling these madden plays arcade plays and that's not going to work in the nfl that's why it stands for not for long Thank you for listening. Like, comment, subscribe, share this, hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming notifications. And if you guys love what you hear, man, you could donate to the page by going to my description box, you know, and hitting that um cash app link. That'll take you to my cash app and you could donate a dollar or you could donate a million dollars, whatever you're willing to give. We accept. Um also, um, you can super chat when the video premieres. You guys can super chat a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, you know, whatever you're willing to give, man. We accept over here. So, um, thank you guys, man, for your support. Thank you for listening. And we are out. DZ.